This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be yet another Mermel combo tutorial. Now, this one is going to be also focusing on the Abysteus and Atlantean Dragoons combos, much like the video that I put out yesterday. But like I mentioned in that video, there are very much two separate categories of Mermel combos you can do. There are the very simplified ones that use very minimal resources that still get you to an ending point but then there are the extreme link spamming combos where you're making firewall dragons doing all this stuff and gaining extra cards along the way that ultimately just make them a lot stronger combos in terms of getting extra resources out of it and all that sort of stuff and it's just basically it's one of those things where you can either do things the easy way the basic way or you can go incredibly in depth and you can do things the hardest way possible and try to heighten your chances of victory as high as you can make them with your own intellect and your own player skill and things like that so this is going to be another video focusing on the mermel bistius and atlantean dragoons combos i'm going to show you how you can link spam with just Teus and just dragoons as a two card combo and then i'm going to show you two expanded versions of the combo as well adding a third card into each combo sequence to vary the result up a bit but the first combo i'm going to show you is mermel abyss plus Atlantean Dragoons, and in the previous video, all this did was make Decode Talker and drop a Moolin Glaze and take two cards out of your opponent's hand. Nothing really that substantial, but if you start like uh, if you start Link Spamming and start going into Firewall Dragons and stuff, then instead of dropping Moolin Glaze, you're able to make double Firewall Dragon, Bahamut, Toad, have an Abyss Sphere lined up, and have access into, uh, into using Abyss Sphere as a trap. So, it makes your opponent play on less cards overall. If you just did the Moolin Glaze play from the previous video, your opponent's discarding two cards out of their hand, and not much else is happening. They're still playing on four cards going second, against only a Deco Talker and against a Moolin Glaze. But with this two-card combo going Link Spam crazy, you end up with a Firewall Dragon that is unused, that can bounce for one, and then you end up with a Totally Awesome on the board that can negate a card, and then you end up with Abyss Sphere, with Atlantean Heavy Infantry as a combo to act as a trap, like a Rageki break of sorts, to make your opponent be playing essentially on three cards that are not going to be disrupted. So, without further ado, I'm just going to show you how this plays out. It's very much inspired by the uh, Teus and Eptibus combo that I did a video on a couple weeks back. But So you're going to discard Dragoons to activate your Teus' effect in hand, and off of your Dragoons and off of your Teus, you're going to add a Deep Sea Diva to your hand off Dragoons, and off of Teus you're going to add Mermel Abyss Gunned. Then from here you're going to normal summon Diva and use Diva's effect to special summon Neptibus the Atlantean Prince out of your deck. And then Neptibus's effect is going to send Atlantean Dragoons, the second copy from your deck to the graveyard, to add Atlantean Heavy Infantry to your hand. Uh, now this could be either Marksman or Heavy Infantry, it just depends on what your overall sequencing of plays is going to be. But for this combo specifically, you want it to be Heavy Infantry. If you're only doing Teus plus Dragoons and no other extenders, you want it to be Heavy Infantry because you're going to end up discarding it using it in, in, uh, in its uh, water quality for a, a mega low summon, and then you're going to be able to add it back to your hand later off of either Firewall or Totally Awesome. So it, it recurs the card back to your hand to be used in conjunction with Abyss Sphere. But your Dragoons is going to trigger here, and you're going to search for Abyss Megalo. And it should be noted that even if you just wanted to go the Moolin Glace route here, you're 100% fine in doing so. You've gained a few extra uh, like additional cards over the OSHA play, and you could just make Decode Talker with these three, and that puts you to five in Grave, and you'd be able to drop Moolin Glace if that's the play line you want to go down. So you could do another simplified combo in this regard uh, that's a little bit better than the OSHA play, uh, because you get the two extra cards in your hand, because, you know, with... Heavy Infantry and Gunned in your hand, those, those are just two additional cards that you didn't have if you did the OSHA version. So something worth noting that I didn't bring up in yesterday's video, I forgot to bring that up. But, carrying onward, what you're going to do from here is that you are going to link with these three cards into Decode Talker. Uh, because you want the Link 3 to be here. You don't want to make Mistar Boy because you want to keep as many zones in your main monster zone as vacant as possible for this combo sequence to get full value out of your number 42. But so you're then going to reveal Megalo, you're going to discard the two waters in your hand, the Gunned and the Heavy Infantry. If you have another just place filler water monster, you could discard it as well to keep the Heavy Infantry in hand, but you definitely want to be discarding Gunned. And from here, your Gunned will activate to bring back your Abyss Teus, and then your Megalo will activate searching for Abyss Sphere. Specifically Sphere. Sphere is a lot more potent currently than uh, searching the Spell Negator. 
because it doesn't require you to keep a mermail on board, which is important, but then also because of the fact that this functions like a Raigeki break, whereas the spell negator, that's the equip spell, just falls off and your opponent has control over that situation. Whereas with Abyss Fear into Abyss Pike or Abyss Turge to discard heavy infantry and destroy a card um, on your opponent's turn, that is very much something that you are in control of, and so it's something that I prefer greatly. But so you add Abyss Fear to your hand, and then the Teus gets summoned, and then from here you're just going to overlay into number 42 Galaxy Tomahawk and one of the zone's deco talker points to detach both the materials from it to summon your four tokens to be used with for Link Summoning. Uh, your opponent takes no further battle damage this turn, or is it battle damage or effect damage? No, no further battle damage. Um, and so then you're going to link away with Galaxy Tomahawk and one of the tokens into Proxy Dragon where the Deco Talker points. Then you're going to link with the Deco Talker and one of the tokens into a Firewall Dragon in the zone that the Proxy Dragon has opened up for you, right underneath your extra monster zone that you are using. And then from here you're going to link with one of the tokens into a Link Spider above the Firewall Dragon. And now from here you'll use Firewall Dragon's effect to add back two waters, and so, just like the Neptibus Teus combo, we're going to be adding back two copies of Dragoons. So now from here, the thing is, the problem with this combo uh, for uh, for uh, how it works in reference to Neptibus Teus, uh, Neptibus Teus makes it very easy for you to hit five waters in Grave, um, and it makes it very easy for you to go Moulin Glace, Bahamut Toad, and Double Firewall, but you end up using both firewalls. In this combo, you leave one firewall dragon loaded to bounce for one, but you end up with way too many waters in grave for uh, for Mooling Lace to be searched and dropped, unless you have outside resources like uh, like Abyssmander or uh, Aqua Spirit or something like that. Like things things can change the resources in your grave to mold for Mooling Lace plays, and that is something I will touch on in the expanded combos. But just something that I want to go ahead and address right away. But so you use this Firewall Dragon to return two cards to hand, so you return two Dragoons to your hand. And so then from here, you're going to link with the last token and the Proxy Dragon into any Link 3. It doesn't really have to be Gaia Saber, but I prefer it to be Gaia Saber. Um, it could be another Deco Talker if you're playing another copy of that or whatever, but it just needs to be a Link 3 um, next to Firewall, and you need to send the Proxy Dragon to Grave. So... Firewall Dragon will trigger to special summon a card out of your hand, so you'll special summon one of the Dragoons, and then you'll link with Link Spider and the Gaia Saber, the Link 3, into Link 4, into Firewall Dragon, and the Firewall Dragon will trigger its effect again to special summon another card from hand, in this case the second copy of Dragoons. And so then you'll overlay with these two Dragoonses into Bahamut Shark, and then you will detach off Bahamut Shark to get totally awesome. And now from here you have a couple of different options that you have capable to you uh, for your Dragoon search. The biggest problem that I have with uh, with this uh, sequence is that if you look in Grave, there are seven waters in Grave. The Dragoons that just hit there, and then there's six other waters. Um, so your Dragoons is going to trigger for a search here, and it doesn't really matter what you search, honestly. If I'm completely honest with you, it doesn't really matter. You could search another Megalo, you could search a Neptibus to go in conjunction with the Abyss Sphere for Link Plays. Um, there's a few different things that you have access to. You could search another copy of Heavy Infantry so that you don't have to rely on Toad hitting the grave to add it back um, before using Abyss Sphere. There's a couple of different things that just overall change how outcomes are perceived for, for this specific sequence, for a two-card sequence. But this is still a very good combo sequence for it to be a two-card play with just Teus and Dragoons. Like I said, this Firewall Dragon is unused, and it can bounce for one. Uh, where's one on this? <laughs> uh, this Firewall Dragon is unused and can bounce for one. This Firewall Dragon is used, but it's still a body on the board. You have a Toad that can negate a card your opponent plays and potentially steal it. Um, and then the Toad itself will add back Heavy Infantry or whatever card in Grave you have. You could, like I said, um, off this last Dragoon search, you could easily have just added another Heavy Infantry to your hand to use in conjunction with Abyss Sphere. But what am I talking about when I say in conjunction with Abyss Sphere? The play I'm talking about is a play that we've been doing in Mermel's since Invasion Vengeance, when Toad came out and made it very easy for the deck to go first. And what I'm talking about is, you have Heavy Infantry in hand and you have Abyss Sphere set on your field. Your opponent plays a card, plays a monster, plays a face-up card that you don't want them to have on the field. You activate your Abyss Sphere on their turn, and you summon either Abyss Turge or Mermel Abyss Pike out of your deck. And now Abyss Sphere negates the effects of the monster that was summoned, but it does not prevent you from activating the effect. So you'll trigger your Turge or your Pike, paying cost, because it's a cost to discard, that's how the entire Atlantean Mermel deck works, 
and you'll discard the Heavy Infantry to try and activate Pike's effect on Summon, but its effect will be negated by the Abyss Sphere. And so, you don't get any search off Pike, but what you do get is Heavy Infantry was discarded to activate a Water Monster's effect. And so Heavy Infantry will trigger its effect and pop a face-up card that your opponent controls. So in that essence, Abyss Sphere is essentially operating as a trap card. And now Abyss Sphere at the end of the turn will pop itself and Pike will go with it, but you essentially got value out of that. Because you took away a card that your opponent invested resources into, and the fact that all of these cards that you're working with were free just means it was perfectly fine. The Abyss Sphere was free off of your Megalo, the Heavy Infantry was free off one of your Dragoon searches, or it was free because it was added back to your hand off totally awesome. Uh, there's a bunch of different factors that go into play there that make this just really solid. Um, but then even if your opponent isn't activating anything um, and doesn't bait the Abyss Sphere on their turn, you're able to flip the Abyss Sphere on your own turn and do the same sort of thing of Summon Pike, but instead discard something like Nept Abyss or Gunned, and then that will allow you to bring back an Atlantean or a Mermail and just extend your plays. So Abyss Sphere is both a trap and an extender with how it operates with cards in your hand. So... And like that's just something really good to uh, to acknowledge. It's a trick that we've been doing since last November. If uh, if you were playing Mermail during that time frame, this was very much a very strong card during that format, but not for summoning Lind. Lind was way too slow of a play. We were using it proactively and reactively back then, with cards in our hand like Neptibus, Dragoons. Uh, gunned and heavy infantry and marksmen and shit so there's things to note in that regard but I'm going to stop rambling I'm gonna rewind this real quick and I'm gonna show you the first of the two extensions that allow you to start dropping Moulin Glace with these combo sequences rather than just relying on Bahamut Toad and a firewall bounce so give me just a second and we will be right back with that one alright so for this third combo sequence showing an expanded version of this two card combo I've already shown you what just these two cards can do on their own which is already pretty powerful but if you add either Mermel Abyss Megalo or Moulin Glace itself as your third card, what it allows you to do is it allows you to drop Moulin Glace rather early in the combo sequence, take two cards out of your opponent's hand, and then it also allows you to go forward and do the exact same ending board of Toad, uh, of, uh, Toad Bahamut Shark, and having a firewall that is unused with Abyss Sphere and stuff like that. So... Uh, just, uh, just because, like, Megalo is most definitely probably the one that you're more likely playing multiples of instead of Moulin Glace, uh, it's more likely to be in your hand. I will start with it as the combo, uh, extender rather than Moulin Glace. But so, combo starts just like the previous version. Uh, you discard Dragoons for, uh, Teus' effect, and off of your Teus, you're going to add Mermel Abyss Gunned, and then off your Dragoons, you're going to add Deep Sea Diva. You're going to Normal Summon Diva. you're going to get your, Atla uh, Neptibus the Atlantean Prince out of your deck, you're going to use Neptibus's effect, sending the second Dragoons from your deck to the graveyard and adding Atlantean Heavy Infantry to your hand or Marksman. Um, doesn't really matter. But because of the Megalo being in your hand already, off of this Dragoons, you're going to add the Moulin Glacia, the Elemental Lord, to your hand. Now, I should note that I don't really prefer this combo. I will do it if I'm in a tournament setting, and if it's presented to me, I will definitely do this combo rather than not do it. If I'm in a match or something, because like I might as well, right, give myself the highest chance to win, but I don't prefer it, because what it does is it gets rid of your Moulin Glace on your turn one, meaning that you skip your next battle phase, meaning the game is going to guaranteed give your opponent two turns, and that is something that kind of causes complications, but it's something to uh, something to keep note of. But So you will link these three away into your Decode Talker in the extra monster zone, and then from here you have five waters engraved. So you are immediately going to drop Moulin Glace in the furthest away zone from whatever you're Link Summoning with, and you're going to drop two cards out of your opponent's hand. Now from here, you're going to reveal Megalo, discarding your infantry and your Gunned to summon it, and then your Gunned is going to trigger, bringing back your Abyss Teus, and then your Megalo is going to trigger, searching for Abyss Sphere again. So Teus gets summoned, and then you'll overlay these two into your number 42 Galaxy Tomahawk, and then you will detach both materials from the Galaxy Tomahawk to summon as many tokens as possible. But because Moulin Glace is on the field, it is only going to summon three tokens. So you're going to be linking away with the Moulin Glace, which is what I was talking about earlier. How it's going to mandatorily skip your next battle phase. Um, the battle phase of your next turn, rather. So during your second turn, you're not going to be able to conduct a battle phase. You're just going to specifically be using that turn to out more of your opponent's cards to where they can't play on essentially their second turn. Uh, so it's not something I prefer, uh, because it's kind of a drawback, 
but it is still a very possible combo to be doing, and it's, you know, taking two cards out of your opponent's hand and then putting up three forms of, you know, disruption against them. So, like, that's five cards worth of disruption and, and discarding. So, it's it's something that's it's kind of worth it to do in the long run. But, so what you're going to do here is you're going to link with the Mulan Glace and the Galaxy Tomahawk into the Proxy Dragon in the zone that the Deco Talker opens for you. Then you are going to link with a token and the Decode Talker into your Firewall Dragon in the zone that Proxy Dragon opens up. Then you're going to link with a token into Link Spider above the Firewall Dragon yet again. And then since the Firewall Dragon is pointing to two cards, you're going to activate its effect, adding two Dragoons to your hand. And then you're going to link with Proxy and the token again into a Link 3 of your choosing. I usually just go for Gaia Saber. The Firewall will trigger its effect since Proxy went to Grave to summon your Dragoons. And then you'll link with Link Spider and Gaia Saber into Firewall Dragon number 2 that is unused for 1. And then this Firewall will activate its effect again to summon Dragoons again. And then you'll overlay into your Bahamut Shark and then you will detach Dragoons to summon your Totally Awesome, and then your Dragoons again will yield you a search, and you can search for either Neptibus or you can search for another copy of Atlantean Heavy Infantry. It's up to you. You just you unfortunately can't add Neptibus off Neptibus, or else I would just like leave this in the deck uh, just to have more copies of it there. Uh, but you can search Marksman instead. Like you're you're practically just you're 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 changing things up in your favor. In fact, it's probably better for you to just be adding Marksman in this situation anyway. Because if you add Marksman here and then Toad goes to Grave, that adds back Heavy Infantry. And in that method, what that allows is that allows for your Abyss Sphere to hit face-ups or face-downs with the aforementioned Pike play. But yeah, so what this combo did is it sacrifices your next turn's battle phase because of Mulan Glace leaving the field as a Link material. So that kind of is the downside. But what you end up with is you end up with the same board as before. You end up with Firewall Dragon that's unused for one. Totally awesome, it's going to negate a card. You have Abyss Sphere that's going to operate as a trap card or an extender, a proactive or reactive resource uh, using Heavy Infantry, which your opponent has to bait the Totally Awesome. And then in that point, you're going to add this back and use it with Abyss Sphere, or you could have just had it, uh, added Heavy Infantry off of your last Dragoon Search. But regardless, this is three forms of disruption, two to three forms of disruption, and then you also took two cards out of your opponent's hand with Mulan Glacia very early in the combo sequence. So even though you skip your next battle phase, your opponent is essentially playing on four cards that they're drawing to four next turn. Then they have to deal through three. They have to play through three different forms of disruption: one negation, one bounce, and one just proactive or reactive disruption uh, source in the form of the Abyss Sphere for Abyss Pike. So it means that your opponent essentially has one free card that is not going to be messed with. Now, unfortunately, you can't kill your opponent on the next turn, but if you have protected your board, your Bahamut Shark is automatically going to be another totally awesome. Uh, you have a bunch of different capabilities that you have there as well with uh, if your opponent didn't bait the Abyss Sphere. There's a bunch of different things that go into play with how this functions. But so I'm going to rewind this once again and show you one more expanded version of the combo sequence, adding a different third card into the combo, and again, allowing you to drop Mulan Glace, Bahamut Toad, and Double Firewall with these Mermail extensive link plays. Now, like I said, this is not a combo that I really prefer because of the fact that you skip your battle phase of the next turn, so the first turn that you would have a battle phase, you don't get to kill your opponent, which can have some negative, uh, some negative results and connotations, but basically, if I'm in a tournament setting and this presents itself as my three-card combo hand, I'm going to do it. There's, there's no way you're going to make me not do it. I'm going to do it every time if it presents itself because I'm trying to win and sometimes you got to get lucky. You got to just put your opponent on. You're not going to out me in two turns. But anyway, like I said, I'm going to rewind this real quick and then we will jump straight back in with a different expanded version of the same combo. All right, so for this combo, it is again Teus plus Dragoons, but for the third piece of the combo, the expanded piece that is added onto the combo sequence, we are adding Aqua Spirit into it. Now, Silent Angler and an Instant Fusion for Rare Fish do not work in this combo. Aqua Spirit is specifically what you want for this because it mitigates graveyard numbers of waters and allows you to uh, drop Mulan Glace and do Bahamut Toad shenanigans and end with Sphere and stuff like that. So this one functions a little bit differently, but it does function very similarly to the original Neptibus plus Teus combo that I did a video on a couple weeks back. It just, you add an extra card into it because you have Dragoons in the early stage rather than being able to summon Neptibus and resolve multiple Dragoons is in that way. But so... 
Uh, this is a combo that uses both of your Firewall Dragons, but it lets you have Sphere plus Heavy Infantry already in your hand for the next turn, and then has uh, Bahamut Toad and you've Mulan Glazed your opponent and stuff like that. So, without further ado, you'll you'll find out what I'm talking about as I perform this. But So you'll do your Teus, discarding Dragoons, and off your Dragoons you'll add Diva, and off of your Teus you'll add Abyss Gund, and then from here you're going to Normal Summon the Diva yet again, and then you're going to summon Neptibus the Atlantean Prince out of your deck with the Diva's effect. Neptibus will trigger sending Dragoons to Grave and specifically adding Atlantean Heavy Infantry to your hand for this one. Your last Dragoon search is going to be for Mulan Glaze, so you want to add Heavy Infantry to your hand just to discard off Megalo. And then you're going to be able to add it back to your hand very early on with, uh, with your first Firewall Dragon that you make. So, things to consider. But this Dragoon's effect will activate, searching your Abyss Megalo to your hand, and we will carry on from there. So, you're going to link these three into Decode Talker yet again. And then you are going to discard the Gund and the Heavy Infantry for your Abyss Megalo to summon it. Your Megalo is going to search for your Abyss Sphere, and your Gund is going to bring back your Abyss Tius. Then you overlay these two into your number 42 Galaxy Tomahawk, detaching both materials. I'm trying to go a little bit faster for this one since I've basically, this is the third time I'm doing this through at this point, um, just to show you the minor differences that happen. Summon all four of your tokens. Then you're going to link with your Galaxy Tomahawk and a token into your Proxy Dragon in the zone the Decode Talker opens for you. And then you're going to link with a token and your Decode Talker into your Firewall Dragon in the zone that Proxy Dragon opens for you. Then you're going to link away with a token into Link Spider above the Firewall Dragon, as we've done in the previous two combos. Now from here, Firewall Dragon is loaded for two bounces, so you're going to go ahead and do that. Now, you only need to add back one Dragoons here, because you have the Aqua Spirit in your hand taking the place of the other Dragoons as a supplemental level 4 for your Bahamut Shark play. So, you get to add back Dragoons, and then you get to add back any other water monster in your grave that you want just to start hitting the right numbers. So, we're going to add back the Dragoons, or not the Dragoons, the, uh, the Heavy Infantry, just to go ahead and have it in hand alongside the Abyss Sphere, so that we don't have to worry about any outside factors of Toad going to Grave and adding a card back or adding a card back with Firewall later or anything like that. And as you can see, we still have six Waters in Grave, so there's still a lot that we have to mess with. But so from here, you're going to link away with the last token and the Proxy Dragon into your Link 3. The Gaia Saber, in this case, is what I'm using, and then the Proxy Dragon will trigger um, your Firewall uh, by going to Grave, and then you're going to Special this Dragoons out of your hand in any one of the zones. Now from here, there's still six Waters in Grave. So what you're going to do is you're going to link away with Link Spider and Gaia Saber into Firewall Dragon. Specifically, you want to do it in this order. You're not going to be triggering this Firewall Dragon's effect unless you really want to. But basically what you're going to be doing from here is you're going to summon Aqua Spirit. And you're going to banish a water that's not going to be worth anything, uh, any value for the rest of the game like this Deep Sea Diva. All these other waters in Grave are, you know, good value. And there's five waters in, graves here, in, uh, in Grave here, but you're about to trigger a Dragoon Search. So what you're going to do is you're going to overlay with the Dragoons and the Aqua Spirit into your Bahamut Shark, and you're going to detach the Dragoons, and you're going to specifically summon Totally Awesome in the extra monster zone that is now freed up, and then your Dragoon Search is going to search for your Mulan Glaze. Now from here, this Firewall Dragon has been used. This Firewall Dragon has not been used. So you're going to use this Firewall Dragon to add back any card to your hand from your grave. A water monster, essentially. Now, you have multiple good quality water monsters to choose from. You have Dragoons, Neptibus, Gund, uh, uh, Teus, and Megalo. I usually prefer to add back Gund, specifically because it allows you know the Sphere to be very proactive and reactive, as well as Totally Awesome is going to add one of these cards back when it hits the graveyard anyway. It allows you to get more information to, you know, add back Teus or Megalo. Like, you want to have more information before you're adding cards like that back to your hand to see what plays you want to be structuring. So I prefer to add these cards back off of the off of the Firewall Dragons anyway. So then from there, you're at five Waters Engraved, so you special the Mooling Glaze. Take two cards out of your opponent's hand. Your opponent is now going to be playing with four cards going second. They have to dedicate at least a card to getting rid of Totally Awesome, meaning they're effectively playing on three cards. And then you also have access into the Abyss Sphere, being a proactive and reactive card. So you have the Heavy Infantry in hand, that you can do the aforementioned Abyss Pike trick to uh, to summon Abyss Pike and discard the Heavy Infantry. And that is why, in fact, it's important that you summon the Totally Awesome up here, because if you had summoned it down here, your Abyss Sphere has no zone to summon into. So you have to summon either the Firewall Dragon 
or the totally awesome in your extra monster zone. And I prefer to summon the totally awesome up here because Firewall Dragon being here means that more links can be constructed like around it. Uh, whereas if it's up, if this Firewall Dragon is up here and you summon Toad down here, your opponent gets an extra monster zone uh, because Firewall Dragon points to their board. So I prefer this way around because you know Toad vacates the extra monster zone, can add a card back. Um, and can trigger this Firewall Dragon as well. There's a lot of different things that go into play there. But because you summoned it in specifically this zone and left one of your main monster zones open, Sphere can be activated at any time. So you aren't having to worry about using Toad before using Abyss Sphere to summon your Pike and discard Heavy Infantry to pop a card. Uh, so there's that. So those are the three combos that I wanted to show you for this video. Those the, you know, extreme link spammy version of Teus Plus Dragoons, what it allows you to do, and then what you get access to when you start adding more of your engine cards into the mix, like your Aqua Spirits and your Megalos. Now, like I said, for this specific combo, Instant Fusion for Rare Fish does not work, and Silent Angler does not work either, because Silent Angler would prevent you from being able to summon Moulin Glaze because you can't summon cards from hand for the rest of the turn. There's things that all factor into that, so... But anyway, as always guys, thanks for watching and let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, drop a like if you want to see more Mermo videos and more combo tutorials. Leave me some feedback down below, I'd love to hear it. And subscribe if you're new here and want to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! content. I'd love to welcome you on board to the channel. But links as always are in the description to my Facebook fan page as well as my personal Patreon page. If you like the content I've been producing and want to support my ability to continue creating that content and improving its quality, then Patreon is the best way to do so. It also gets you access into monthly giveaways for significant amounts of Yu-Gi-Oh! product, as well as access into my private Discord server where me and a bunch of other people People chat on a daily basis about Yu-Gi-Oh! and various other pointless fand fandoms and things of that nature. So if you're interested in any of those things, then definitely go check out the Patreon link in the description down below, and I thank you in advance for any support you'd be willing to give. But, special thanks as always to Travis Miller, Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yugi Phoenix, and Troy Perkins, as well as everybody else that is currently supporting me over on Patreon this month. You help out a ton, and as always, you have my eternal gratitude for what you allow to continue happening. But, other than that, as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below, as I've already said. And as usual, guys, take care. I'll see you in the next video.